How's it going guys and welcome back to The Lair and today we're back in standard best of one. I call this Feasting Apparition. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, I just want to say if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It's free to you and helps us out so much. Also feel free to drop me a comment, talk about strategy, deck ideas, misplays. I read the comments daily. And lastly, if you have any friends or family that are into magic, please share the channel with them. Uh, one other thing I'd like to say for all of my new followers or subscribers on either Twitch or YouTube, um, once you do follow or subscribe, just reach out to me in the chat or the comment and say something like, hey, I just subscribed or whatever, and I can respond to you with an in-game code that you can use in Arena to unlock a mystery gift from Wizards. Just make sure to reach out to me in the chat or the comment, because that's the only way for me to respond to you. Um, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. Uh, so this deck is based on a few different uh, builds of a deck that's been getting more popular over the last couple days. Uh, that revolves around Wicked Wolf and food. Um, so this is my variation on it. Um, really feeling the Yorion right now, especially with all the uh, rogues uh, mill, and mill going on. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So we are going to be using Yorion as our companion. Um, so we have a deck that's 20 cards more than the uh, standard size deck. So we're going to be running 80 cards today. And uh, he's going to be in our... Uh, a companion so like kind of like our commander uh, he's a four or five flyer we already went over his uh, companion um, uh, restriction so we'll, we have that done and then his ability says when he enters the battlefield exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control and return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step onto the one drops we have the full play set of gilded goose uh, he's a 0-2 flyer, and when he enters the battlefield, we create a food token, and then we can pay two, tap, create a food token, or we can tap and sacrifice a food and add one mana of any color. On to the two drops, we have the full play set of Charming Prince. He's a 2-2, two, two, and when he enters the battlefield, we choose one. We either scry two, we gain three life, or we can exile another target creature you own, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Four copies of Glass Casket for all those rogues out there. It's an artifact, and when it enters the battlefield, we exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less until Glass Casket leaves the battlefield. Four copies of Trail of Crumbs. It's an enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, we create a food token, and it says whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. If you do, look at the top two cards of your library, and you may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Three copies of Maze Mine Tome. It's an artifact that we can tap and put a page counter on, scry, or we can pay two, tap it, and put a page counter on it and draw a card. And once we have four or more page counters, we exile it and gain four life. Onto the three drops, we're running the full play set of Skyclave Apparition. She's a 2 2, and when she enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non land token, or I'm sorry, non land non token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost four or less. And when Skyclave Apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX Blue Illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. Running two copies of Balaged Recovery or Balaged Sanctuary can either enter a land tap that produces green mana or we can return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Running the full play set of Lana War Visionary, he's a 2 2, and when he enters the battlefield, we draw a card and then we can tap him for one green mana. On to the four drops, we have the full play set of Shatter the Sky. Each player who controls a creature with power four or greater draws a card, and then destroy all creatures. The full play set of Wicked Wolf. He's a 3-3, three, three, and when he enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control, and we can sacrifice a food and put a 1-1 one, one token on him, and it gains indestructible until the end of turn, and we tap him. On to the five drops, we have three copies of Elspeth Conquers Death. This is an enchantment saga. The first chapter says, Exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. The second chapter says, Non-token, I'm sorry, non-creature spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast until your next turn. And the final chapter says, Return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield and put a plus one plus one counter or a loyalty counter on it. And then three more copies of Yorion. Uh, we already went over him, so we won't go that over that again. And then on the top end, we have some really nasty shit. We have two copies of Kogla, the Titan Ape. He's a 7-6, and when he enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. And whenever Kogla attacks, destroy target artifact 
or enchantment defending player controls. And then we can pay two and return target human you control to its owner's hand and Kogla gains indestructible until the end of turn. Running the full play set of Feasting Troll King. He's a 7-6 with Vigilance and Trample. And when, he, when Feasting Troll King enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens. And we could sacrifice three food tokens and return Feasting Troll King from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only during your turn. We're running two copies of Turn Timber Serpentine Wood or Turn Timber Symbiosis. This is another module land. We could have it enter the battlefield untapped if we pay three otherwise it enters tapped and it produces green mana or we can cast it for its sorcery side which says look at the top seven cards of your library you may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield if that card has converted mana cost three or less it enters with three additional one one counters on it and put the rest of the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order and then finally three copies of the great henge legendary artifact this spell costs x less to cast where x is the greatest power among creatures you control and we could tap, add two green mana, and then we gain two life. And it says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. On to the lands, I chose six plains, six forest, two boulder loft or branch loft pathway, oops, sorry, four temple of plenty, four endotha triome, and four fabled passage. I'm sorry, real quick, I just want to change these lands up weird like that. Really digging the new Zendikar lands. So let's do... Alright, now we're ready. So yes, what is this deck about? This deck is about food and utilizing food in a number of different ways. Gilded Goose lets us use food to ramp and uh, fix our mana base. Trail of Crumbs helps us, you know, kind of get a little, it's kind of like scry a little bit, I'd say, uh, but it can help us kind of pull things into our, uh, our hand. Wicked Wolf, of course, uh, synergizes with food by getting pumped and gaining indestructible. And then, of course, at the top end, we have the Feasting Troll King, which is, uh, he uses food to... Uh, bring himself back from the graveyard. Um, other than that, we have a lot of control. Like I said, especially we're especially designed to take out rogues. Uh, we have the full place of glass casket to take out rogues, Skyclave Apparition, full uh, Shatter the Sky, and then also Elspeth Conquers Death, all defensive spells. Elspeth helps us recurse some of our threats if we have to board wipe our own stuff. Um, the cool thing is, is majority of our more powerful creatures like Kogla, um, and Wicked Wolf, we can give them indestructible, so when we shatter, not only will we usually draw a card, um, but they'll stay on the board. And then if we have a Feasting Troll King and he dies, usually we'll have so much food, we can just bring him back anyway, so we don't really care. And then if we do wipe any of our other creatures, we can bring those back with Elspeth. And at an emergency, we have Balaged where we can literally bring back any card. Uh, Great Henge is just completely busted when it gets working, especially in this type of deck where we can consistently bounce, draw cards, gain life. Um, Maze Mind Tomb is another one to help us stabilize with life gain, scry, card draw. Um, what else did I not cover? Charming Prince kind of also synergizes with the Yorion, the bounce, Wicked Wolf bouncing creatures like Land of War Elf to draw additional cards, bouncing Skyclave because Skyclave exiles that permanent and then when it leaves, that permanent does not come back, unlike, you know, enchantment removal. So uh, very powerful synergy there with him. Uh, that's pretty much the deck. So let's hop into it. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Excited to see what happens with this deck. This is the first rendition of this deck, so obviously I could be making changes as we go along. But let's see what happens. I wonder if you'll get those uh, four quits like last time. Well, this is not... This is not a, as powerful a deck, I don't think, but we'll see. Oh, it's crazy. oh, that deck is nasty. I made some tweaks to it. All right, I got it. All right, so our first hand, we have one lander mm, with a gilded goose and a turned timber. I don't think that this is keepable. So we'll mulligan this. This looks a little bit better. Uh, I think we will drop the Elspeth. Unfortunately, we have to end up with the Temple, Fabled Passage. Um, 
Yeah, I guess we're going to need that, right? In case our Gilded Goose gets picked off. Reclaim the way search library for basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and what? Just for so scary. Okay. Alright, so let's play you. Let's play you. Create ourselves a food token. Luminarch Aspirant. Okay. So I think the move here is to get the wolf out and kill that. Checking my cup by my tattoo station. I, um, I mean, that's where it was, man. If you took it out, I don't know. That's why I said you got when you get something out, you got to put it back. Maybe looking to make one of those drawers over there. All right, so he plays a Shadow Spear. Um, okay. Well. Let's play Visionary first. Draw a card. There's a Shatter, that's nice. Let's play out our Fable Passage. Forest, since we have a claims in our hand, and we'll go in the wolf. Basri's lieutenant has protection from multicolor, so he doesn't have protection from any of these. Um, what is the move here? I could. We could activate a food. I could pay for a food. Then again, he would only be four. Hmm. Three. Let's play in Gotha. Let's play out Charming Prince. What do we want to do here? I think. Let's scry to Great Henge is nice. Don't think we need another Charming Prince. And I think I will create a food token. And pass. Bosh Stampede. So he's playing his own Temple of Plenty, scrying. Excuse me. One to the bottom is good. He's equipping his Shadow Spear. Okay. <coughs> and he's not attacking. Very interesting. Well, let's play out this Great Henge. Um, so we'll tap this, we'll create another food, mm -hmm. and I think we just pass. Elder. 
that is not good. So we will definitely probably be board wiping this next turn. For sure. Bless you. My turn again. Okay. Let's play this. Let's search up. Another forest. Okay. I've got one, two, three, one, two, three. What's the move here? Let's go ahead and create another food token. Okay. Let's get Yorion in our hand. Let's activate the wolf. And let's shatter. That'll take out these guys. Again, Let's see if that works. It doesn't, but oh well, it's fine. Now we can at least start going off with uh, Great Henge. Well, that was a learning experience. Um, I thought that I could replay the uh, on the stack to give Wicked Wolf indestructible over. But I guess the shadow, shadow Spear overrides that. So that's good to know for next turn. I'm sorry, next game. But, um, yeah. It doesn't look like my opponent is. Okay. Cool. A lot of options here. What's the biggest threat? Whenever one or more 1 1 counters are put on a non hydro creature, put one counter. Okay. As well, if they put a 1 1 counter, moves it to one counter on each attack creature you control the 1 1 counter. Um, okay, so. Let's do this. He's going to come into play with an additional 1-1 one, one counter. Let's attack you. Mm -hmm. We will glass casket you. And I think I'm good for right now. We'll hold up the blocks. If he wants to come in, I'll just block. Then we still have a backup glass casket if we need it. <clears throat> cool. Yeah? Well, I will block that for sure. Cool. Keep forgetting about this damn shadow sphere. That's fine. Well, I still think that this is the way to go. So, let's trail of crumbs for free. Foe to free. Foe to free. And I think, honestly, I think we take you. Okay. Let's play Yorion. Okay. Nice. 
Uh, we'll just bounce this and this so that we can get a, a re-trigger. Still can activate this on his turn. Gain that life. <coughs> okay. Still not enough points of damage. Oh. Crack this, gain some life. Nasty. Now he does have protection, but do I sacrifice? Hmm. Next turn, we can Wicked Wolf on to Winota. Ooh, Feasting Troll King. So let's play the Wicked. We will fight you. We'll crack you. Opponents tap out so we can't activate that ability. I will auto pay one. Charming Prince. Um, yeah. Cool. Got to get rid of that Winota. Um. So let's let's play the Prince, right? Let's scry. Uh, I want this apparition. I don't need this land. Okay. Perfect. And I think we pass. Zero two and ha and has hexproof and whenever a creature with this death touch blocks. Okay, cool. So this is like a this is like a a weird four color counter deck. I don't know. But all I have to do is draw a board wipe and then the opponent's pretty screwed. So what's the move here? I think we get our scry on first. Charming Prince. for a board wipe at this point, honestly. Um, let's play the Lana War. We're going to get a double draw from Lana War and the Henge. Gain some life. We will Skyclave the Mir. Perfect. Card. This. Draw another card. And he quits. Got him! At that point, I mean, I think that was kind of a stalemate, but uh, he would have milled himself out before, uh, before we did. But you can just see the, uh, the synergies with it. When you're walking in the room, be careful because Gwaiza like spilled all the dog, a bunch of dog food on the floor. Okay, that's fine. I'm just, I just don't. Okay, to... that's no, that's fine. All right, so far so good. Let's hop into another one.
So, our first hand, we have a three lander, but we have no early interactions. We cannot keep this hand. All right, got a charming prince. Once again, really not feeling this hand. Not feeling this hand. Okay, this is better. We'll keep, we'll drop the Yorion, of course. We'll drop the Kogla, and I guess we'll drop the Trail of Crumbs. Feels bad, but... Sometimes you just get Magic the Gathering. Okay, so there is our Wicked Wolf. We will also scry. Hmm. Man. We need land, unfortunately. It sucks, but it is what it is. Hmm. So we're... Sultai? This could be Sultai mid-range. Let's play out the Goose. The Goose and Goose. We'll play out our Temple. Charming Prince. Yeah. Because we'll, uh, we can bounce, possibly bounce our Wicked Wolf. But opponents playing Sultai, we could be facing anything. We could be facing counter spells. We could be facing, okay. So some type of reanimation. Yeah, definitely some type of reanimation. Opponent has a lot of mill, a lot of self mill. So, curious to see what this is. Is that a swamp? Okay. So, our Wicked Wolf doesn't look so good here. Let's play you. Let's play you. Draw a card. Another land. No attacks, of course. Mike, Romeo, Echo. Oh, it's a Titan's Nest deck. Beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card in your graveyard. XLI card from your graveyard. Add a colorless mana. Spend this only to cast colorless spells. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to warn everybody right now. I've heard about these decks, but I've never. This is the first time me actually playing against one, so forgive me if I make any misplays or lose. <laughs> Alright, so. What is the move here? Get the wolf going. Give him indestructible, eat some food. Okay. And we still have our Charming Prince. Could see an extinction event here. Uh, that's the only board wipe that I know of. But I don't know if this is more of a creature heavy deck or a control style. I believe the way this works is it's more of a controly style where they'll have more um Just put the headphones in. Plug plug the headphones into your phone. I don't have I just go listen to it in the room. Okay Bob. Love you. Alright, so here we go. Let's see what, what this is all about. Shark Typhoon. Okay. So... So he's milling himself to basically pump up his his uh, mana base. Interesting. Alright, so... We definitely need the Trail of Crumbs, for sure. In case he wants to get funky with this... Uh, can he do this at any time? Yes, he can also do this at instant speed. So there's a possibility of three mana here. He could uh, activate a shark. Let's go ahead and play out the Charming Prince. I think we're going to bounce the Lana War to draw a card, honestly. We have Feasting Troll King is nice. I'm just going to go in with the Wicked Wolf right now. Okay. No, uh, no sharky. No flying shark. Draw a card. Okay, see what he does. So, still. He must have big stuff in his hand. If he extinction events, the rook. Okay. Interesting. 
with a huge flying shark. Create two wolf tokens. Okay. So You're not scared of dogs, are you? Okay. What is the move here? I play Feasting Troll King, we get three tokens, we get a 7-6. We don't want him to ultimate, so we have to be careful about killing his wolves. This is a very tricky situation. Um, I think we create a food, for sure. And I think... We just get the Yorion into our hand. And we pass. I have a couple of copies of this card, Titan's Nest, and I've always wondered how it would work. And I, I originally was thinking like some type of creature reanimation, but apparently the way to go is more of like a control build. Target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into two piles. And face up and up. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your. Okay. <clears throat> Enters the battlefield. Enter at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face down pile. Face up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Instant? Yes, it is. Draw three and then discard a card. Okay. Definitely, definitely, definitely looking for a board wipe here. Wow, so he could just cast that. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think he got us on this one. Very interesting deck, Titan's Nest. Definitely looks like more of a controlly build. Interesting. Don't know how I feel about that Artemis, Artemis card or whatever it is. Oh well. Win some and lose some. Pop into another one. Excuse me. So we got a, we got a two lander here. We got a maze mine, but this is, seems once again pretty slow. We got a two lander, charming prince. Ugh, it's tough, man. It's tough. Maybe I need to more add more land in this uh, this deck. Okay, we'll keep this. And we'll drop you, and I guess. Ugh, it's so bad. about this. I don't know about this hand. I think we definitely need to add some... Oh god, I'm on a red. Well, we could be dead before we know it. Alright. Trail of crumbs, we don't need another trail of crumbs. We're looking for some something. Any blockers? Maybe some ramp. Just 
I'm just gonna, I'm sorry guys, I'm just gonna mulligan this. I'm sorry, concede. We just... Alright. Let's check out our, uh... It seems like we're, we need much more land in this deck. So, let's make some adjustments. Decks. Feasting Apparition. I have 26, that's definitely not enough for all of our big boys. So you know what, let's just, let's just cut Galabed. Gives us two more lands, let's put, that puts us at 28. Um, how good is Turn Timber here? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna just gonna cut this too. Let's just we need to land. All right, let's try this out. Okay, hop into another one. Epicurus? Epicurus? Alright. So basically put four more... Excuse me. Basically put four more uh, lands into our deck. See, this looks much better. We'll keep this. Got some early interaction. We've got some 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 scry slash card draw. We got a trail of crumbs. Set up our wolf. Opponent plays temple. Okay. We have no turn in one play, so we'll play out the temple. Feasting troll king. A little too early for him. Great henge. Ugh. Disgusting. I think we get out the maze mine first. We'll pass. playing another temple, so we're looks like we're playing another Sultai build. Sultai is very strong right now. It's one of the top tier decks in the meta. Let's dry up. That feasting troll king, man, he he really wants to Ugh, another Well, we have no choice. At this point though, I don't think we need to land. What we need is a creature. Go ahead and play the Trail of Crumbs. Okay, and we'll pass. The fact that my opponent has a full hand of cards and still has not played anything tells me he's leaning more toward the control side. So let's see what we're dealing with here. Know if I need this land still. We're, we're looking for we're looking for like a you know, creature or something. Okay, there's a Yorion. Let's search up forest. Okay. 
So, like so, six other cards from your graveyard. So he's a hell of a ways away from that. We'll go ahead and just shatter now. He does that card. And we'll pass. Chronos Tribal is apparently what our opponent is playing. Cool. That's nice. Damage would be double for the floor. Kind of prevent the damage. Take away that many counters. Okay. So, do we shatter again? I mean, what are these cards? Fuck it. Shatter again. What are you gonna do? And we pass. Wait to scry because he's gonna mill us. It's scary because we have uh, a lot of a lot of top end creatures that are even converted mana cost. Another gigan. Wow. Alright. Got another Gigan. Lotus Cobra. Okay. Gain some life. That feasting troll king, man. He, he he wants to come out. He definitely wants to come out. Um, if he's playing this, it ha it makes me think he has a way of bouncing it. Or maybe he's just relying on reanimation, but now his graveyard's nice and full, so he can just bring back that Polychronos again. And we've already wasted two board wipes. Five. Um, do I do I glass casket? I guess right. We don't really. Let's glass casket you. Chronos is coming back as a 12-12. We might be in trouble here, folks. Beth. That's nice. I think we're gonna Elspeth here. Okay. I'm assuming he's definitely gonna be Polychronos. On his next turn, lock me your serpent. Okay, I definitely want to. So five cards from your target opponent's graveyard. Interesting. Well, going in for seven. It's a lot of damage. And 
He can activate that at any time. That's pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. Oh, he just had another one. So is that three? Did he hit one of our... Yeah, he did. Fuck. Excuse me. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. Unfortunately, we just faced better decks or, you know, got Magic the Gathering, whatever you want. Um, those first, uh, or I should say those two middle games, I feel like we just didn't have enough mana. Um, so I don't feel like this deck got a real good chance to shine, but um, I'll still be playing around with this particular build. I think it has a lot of potential. Um, uh, this is my version, a Yorion, where we're keeping him as a companion. Maybe I should cut the companion and, like, condense the deck. But, uh, yeah, feel free to, uh, you know, comment on uh, any... My boy Luca, I know he always gives me advice. Feel free to give me any type of pointers or suggestions that you think can make the deck better. Uh, I'll end it at that, and I just want to say once more, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It's free to you and helps us out so much. Drop me a comment, talk about strategy, deck ideas, misplays. I read the comments daily. And if you have any friends or family that are into magic, please share the channel with them. And don't forget, if you're going to be a new subscriber or follower on either my Twitch or YouTube channels, once you do... Excuse me. Once you do uh, follow or subscribe, just reach out to me in the chat or the comment. Excuse me. And say something like, hey, I just uh, fo followed or subscribed. And I can uh, respond to you with an in-game code that you can use in Arena to unlock a mystery gift from Wizards. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.